my name is Kelly and um, we just finished up our North America unit a couple of months ago, but because we moved because of COVID, I am just getting to posting these videos now. So I wanted to go ahead um, and show you how this unit worked out. Uh, I do have a planning unit, which showed kind of the process I use to you know, select books and figure out what we want to work on and how long that's going to take and kind of just general brainstorming. But um, now that we've actually finished, I can show you some of the projects that we did and um, you know what we liked in the books and what we didn't like in some of the books. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys that. Hi, this is Kelly and I just wanted to continue um, now that we're flipped toward the books. So um, I start out, I started out my North American study with several sections. So we had a social studies section, an art section, a geography section, habitats, botany, animals, and the animals included our specialty topic, which was birds for this continent, as well as the carnivore, herbivore, vertebrate and vertebrae, food webs, and how animals move um, with their feet, different kinds of feet, and then their um, different bills um, for the birds. So. We kind of covered like our general overview birds, which we're doing like the nests and the eggs and the life cycle and the feathers. Um, but then also kind of these general concepts that apply to all animals. Um, and then we're going to specifically focus on those general concepts within North America. Um, we also wrote a couple like little mini books and we had some poetry and then we tied everything back to that um, North America. So I'm just going to quickly show you what we worked on and what we liked. Um, so to begin with, we had a um, geography book. It was a workbook that I picked up and I really liked this. It flowed really well with um, what I needed it to focus on. So it had general map skills. Um, and then we did the continents and oceans and we did that before we started this North America unit. And then it has um, a chapter on the landforms and bodies of water. So what I did was I kind of chunked those out and split them up across all the continents. So for um, North America, we focused on um, canyons and valleys. And then um, I kind of just broke the book apart so I printed this out so that you could see it. Um, initially, uh, both my son and my daughter make these workbooks, which I really, we all really like these. Um, initially in that geography book, they had Kind of each individual continent you could cut them out you could color them we put them on a large piece of um like uh, roll out paper kind of like bush of paper we glued them on and we hung that in our on our wall in our school um the first couple weeks of school my kids really like pirates so we used that to do kind of an all about me um page and then i pulled just a couple pirate books for the first um couple weeks of school first week and a half of school or so. Um, so we did this Pirates Next Door, which was super cute. It's about a family that travels across the world in their little boat. Um, and, and I liked it because it was about the family and the extended family. And um, the dust cover of this showed um, the whole family tree, which we used to talk about our family tree. And um, this was really cute. My kids really, really enjoyed this one. Um, with that family tree, we made our own family tree. So uh, we went ahead, that same piece of butcher paper, I printed out pictures of my family. We glued them where they were supposed to be. So it was a good teaching moment. Um, we also read a couple other pirate books. So we, we did Roger the Jolly Pirate, and then we did um, How I Became a Pirate. Um, also within this mapping unit study, um, we made our own rooms. So we got this book called Mapping Penny's World. It was really cute. My kids loved it. Um, I feel like uh, it talked, it was a storybook, but it talked a lot about mapping and the various elements of a map. And then, you know, Penny's learning how to map her world. So one of the things she mapped was her bedroom. We went ahead and did that. Another thing she mapped was um, some uh, buried bones that she put in the yard and where they put them. Um, so we went ahead and we mapped our room. We made a key. Um, we labeled some of the various elements, put in doors and things. 
And then we named, we did our house and our kind of our general neighborhood walk that we liked to do. Um, and then we printed out the North America page. It had this color, New Mexico red, uh, the United States yellow. Um, so just kind of talking about how there's three countries within this continent. Some things from teacher paid teachers like the Statue of Liberty. Um, we designed this bridge for um, Central Park that was really cute. Um, the kids really liked this. So we got this A Green Place to Be book and Iggy Peck the Architect. So in The Green Place to Be, uh, they had, um, the architects had designed a couple different bridges. And um, we really like that. My son is really into um, architecture right now. So um, we went ahead and looked at all the bridges and talked about structure and structural integrity and design and beauty. And then um, we read Iggy Peck the Architect, which is about a little boy who um, is an engineer, uh, is an engineering-ish kid and about how he likes to build things and his teacher's always telling him stop it no and then he gets to a problem with his school and his classmates and he builds his own bridge to save the day so we i basically drew out and printed out just kind of like a little shore on either side with a little water line they colored it in and then they designed their own bridge my daughter made one with flowers and hearts it's very adorable um, we also talked about how, um, you know, Central Park was in New York City, this dichotomy between the city and the, this beautiful park. And then um, from the geography book, we had some canyons and valleys and definitions. They colored them in. And then um, if you just Google, like, coloring pages, so I Googled you know, so many valley coloring pages. They think I just color it in while I'm reading a book. Um, it keeps my kids quiet and focused. Um, so they did the Grand Canyon, we did Mount Rushmore, Bald Eagle, talked about the presidents, um, who lives in the White House, the money, and talked about the presidents some more. We read a little bit on Abraham Lincoln. I really like these um, people books, these um, ordinary people change the world books. I'm going to look and see if they have more of these because it was just really cute. My kids loved it. You know, kind of this little cartoony version um but really good story really good content really well written i like that one a lot um dancing hands my daughter wants to start playing the piano so she played the piano for president lincoln and then sophia valdez the future prez which is um by the same author as the one who did the iggy peck the architect we just really like those books and then you know it's a coloring page for golden gate bridge we had um a sticker book that we used that talked about kind of two things per continent of um, what's special. So we have the world's large or the world's tallest tree. So that's a little teeny person down there. How big a tree coastal redwood is compared, and then the world's um, smallest bird we have, which is uh, a little bee hummingbird, and that's on the end of a eraser eraser on a pencil. And then I found these images for like the red mango swamp. So these are habitats. They got to color in all the animals. We looked up some of these animals and read about them or watched videos, which was really fun. So that took a couple days. Um, I wonder about the Mojave Desert. And then we talked about um, Native Americans. So we read Grandmother's Dreamcatcher and we talked about um, teepees and how they used symbols, like how we use addresses and street names to show what tribe they're from, and also within a tribe, who is the medicine man or who is the chief. So kind of using these symbols as their way of showing who lives there. Um, and then we talked about kind of what's inside of a teepee and um, general elements of it, of their home. And then we rolled this um, template up and made our kind of own teepee. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. And we read, we are grateful. Um, we made our little dream catchers. Then we went ahead and built our little teepees with some sticks and some paper. And the kids colored little designs of things that they love or felt were important. Um, we talked about the Monument Valley. 
and then we'd start South America. Um, the last two things in, or the last three things in this unit, I got these placemats on a whim. So ones, it came in a whole series, but the ones that we're using, we have Mexico, um, Canada, and the United States. My kids really love these and it, it let us have a lot of really good conversations at the dinner table or during lunch or breakfast. And we pull out, you know, scoot our plate to the side and talk about, um, you know, where various locations are, where mommy was born. And these ended up being way more fun than I thought they would be. So that was kind of exciting. Um, we also read a little bit about Alaska. So we read, Akiok's Adventure, which is about a little girl and um, kind of uh, this magical caribou. And um, we read Hideaway Husky, which my daughter really loved. It was just a cute little book. Um, and then we talked about igloos and how people stay warm where it's so cold and um, essentially how they kept the heat in but let the carbon dioxide out and how they kind of, you know, made these crawl spaces to go lower than the, than the ground before they came in. So it kept it as warm as possible. So that was fun. Uh, the last thing here is we read these other two books, First Spacious Skies. This is beautiful. This is about the true story about um, America the Beautiful and how that um, poem and song came to be and um, how she wrote it, and I, this was really pretty. And then we we listened to the um, song quite a bit um, after we read this. And then um, Mr. Ferris and his wheel was about the creation of the first Ferris wheel. My son, who wants to be an engineer or talks about being an engineer, really loved that. For English language arts, we did um, this really cute book called Haiku. It's H-I-K-O-O. -O. The little um, panda bear in this is... His name is Ku, and um, this was great because in part of our botany unit, we reviewed what we learned last year about plants and roots and stems and got a little bit more deeper into that, and we as well did the seasons. So this follows the seasons. There's like four or five pages per season in here. Um, the haikus are really, really short, so I felt like they were super easily digestible. They're not the true haiku pattern, but um, they kind of had the feeling of haiku. Um, so like this is winter. So there were four seasons we read, a season a week. And then what we did after we read it is we brainstormed about the things that made us, like this was about fall. So what things remind you of fall? Oh, it was cold and rainy and sad and you know, the red, orange, and yellow leaves. And then once we had, you know, 20 of those, we kept rearranging them over and over again until we got um, a poem that we liked. And then I wrote it down on the whiteboard and they used that as their copy work for the day. So that was really fun, really great. We ended up with four really cute poems and the kids read them around aloud to the grandma. I got these two read alouds and I loved them and I really wanted my kids to love them, but they just did not. So, um, we got halfway through Seabird and then I decided to table this and do it again, hopefully next year or the year after, because they just, they just weren't responding to it. And that's fine. That's the flexibility of homeschool allows us to do that. So I had planned on reading the Red Fern Glows. We, grows, we read that. And then because we didn't get through those other two read alouds, I added the BFG and Charlotte's Web, which my kids both loved. I read the BFG forever ago and I forgot how hard it is to read aloud or to read um, because the, uh, the, the giant in this makes up so many words. So, um, but my kids really, really, really love that book. So that was fun. Um, for art, we, um, again, made our own little kind of books. This I used for art and English language art. So, um, like for my daughter's or my son's book, um, we put in kind of these little books. So how I got my creeper and it's how he got his stuffed animal creeper. Um, some other science things that we did get put in here. And then, um, some of our art projects got put in here. So this is a really cute, I don't know if you can see it. Um, this is a sample. 
of one I did. So um, we drew these images and then um, on the back of it, you could paste a piece of black paper with cutouts. So I drew a tree stump and I put like little bugs on the black paper. So when I held my paper up to the light, you could see these various bugs in the tree stump. And how we got the idea for that is we read this really great book called Secrets of the Apple Tree. It's called a Shine a Light book. There are many books in this series. We love them all. They're fantastic. Um, but what's great is, is if you lift this book up to like the sunlight, and I don't think you're gonna get the quality here, but if you hold it up, then you can see kind of the mushrooms and the leaves inside of it, or, um, you know, the toad hiding in the leaves or the worms hiding under the ground that the bird is trying to get. So my kids love these books. They're super cute. And um, we really enjoyed this project. It went, the kids did way better with it than I thought they would. And they really loved it. Um, we did some egg art um, and we talked about, we put some masking or some um, gift wrapped tape on the egg that I had given them. And then they used watercolor to color this in. And what we talked about was how the tape was kind of like bird feathers and how the water kind of repelled away from the um, plastic tape and kind of stuck to the paper. We talked about how, how bird feathers were so waterproof. Um, and then within these books and, and just kind of the general art projects we did, we had our main art project. So this was a project that I got from online. It's called, it's George O'Keefe. Um, it was just a really close perspective of a flower. We picked some flowers, we got close to some flowers, we laid on our back and looked at flowers. And then um, we had them draw their own flower with kind of making sure those petals get off the page, coloring them super bright, and then giving them a black Sharpie to um, color them in. And this is my son um, doing his little art project. Um, that was, my kids love art. And the two books we used that for that is these um, Little People Big Dreams book, George O'Keefe. And then they all saw a cat, which is a great book um, that just teaches you about perspective and how um, different things, like a goldfish looking at a cat, sees things in different ways, a mouse looking at a cat. So depending on who you are, you see the cat differently, a bee looking at a cat. We love, love, love this book. It's great. Um, another art project we did was Pollock. So essentially I taped their letters onto a piece of white paper. I gave them a box. We put the paper at the bottom of the box and then they kind of went to town going crazy with the paint. And then we, uh, I gently took the, or my son helped me. So, which is why it's a little messy, but um, he helped me take his letters off of his paper while the, the paint was still a little bit wet. And um, this was really cute. We read, um, the Jackson Pollock Two Pages, and this Vincent Starry Night book. And then um, in here we also did um, a little balloon art project. So in one of the books that we read, it was talking about the Canada Balloon Art Festival. I took pictures of my kids, and then we worked together in Photoshop to kind of um, print them out, and then we cut, we cut them out, and then they built their own little balloons, colored it with oil pastel, and then um, used uh, watercolor, and we glued in some uh, clouds. And then the last artist we did was Frida. Um, I printed this from online. It was just a quick little project. I painted mine. They painted theirs. We read... Um, the Frida book from Little People, Big Dreams, and I also used some of the pictures in my reference book of Frida. Um, she's one of my favorites. The only thing I didn't like, I usually love these Little People, Big Dream books, but the only thing I didn't like is, um, and I was able to talk about it with my kids and, and work around it, but Frida actually got in a really bad accident and she's lying in a pool of blood and it was just, I, I don't understand why they did this. They didn't have to do that. They could have just shown her hurt, but yeah, if you have a sensitive kiddo, be careful. And then uh, that's it for our art books. So next on the list was our science subjects. So
So um, I bought this interactive science notebook and it worked out fantastic. I think we're gonna use maybe 90% of that throughout this whole um, around the world unit study. Um, again, we have our, um, our notebooks that we record all of our information in and soon, you know, we're getting, kids are getting a little older and soon this is gonna transition into more um, writing. But I really like the, the my kids are visual and I really like these um, interactive notebooks. They really enjoy them. They retain the information really well. Um, and especially during COVID when there's nothing else to do, then, you know, this is, this is super fun right now. Um, in this science book, I am having them record a table of contents and writing the titles of what is on which page and writing the page numbers in and then doing the page numbers on all the pages. Um, so we have things like parts of a plant and living and non-living things. Sometimes they narrate to me and I write it down for them. Um, we do science experiments. So this is really cool. Um, we do materials. So what things do we need? We needed two pieces of celery, some water and some food coloring. We were talking about xylem and phylum. And then what we think will happen and then what actually happened, they get to draw little pictures. If they want to, I write the words down. And then later I go back and I print out pictures that I take of the kids doing their experiments and they get to paste them and glue them in. And then like they keep, they pull these books out and they just love looking at them. Um, so we did a Venus flytrap. Um, we talked about seeds. I, we collected a bunch of seeds. I cut them out on the cut, cut them up on a cutting board. Um, so seeds like in our home, like the apple, and the tomato or things out in nature. So we lived in California at the time, avocado um, seed we found, and then um, some grass seed. We looked up some in the microscope and then they chose what seed that they wanted to write about and label. And my son chose the avocado seed. Um, what plants need and what plants give. So we were talking about, you know, how Plants give us a lot of fruits and vegetables, and um, with that, we cut some fruits and vegetables up. So I cut up some onions and garlics here, and we talked about it from one of the books that, one of the source books that we used. Um, we have seasonal changes, leaf rubbings, um, what plants and animals need, what they both need, what they want. Um, we grew some lima bead seeds, so my son holding up his roots, which is fun. Um, the difference between invertebrates and vertebrates. Um, we did some animal footsteps and am I a bird or not? Um, we drew a picture of a snowy owl so they could pick one bird and they had to research that bird. So, you know, it's really simple, but we can start the basis for creating a flow map. Um, you know, you have your snowy owl, he has black spots, he has white feathers, um, the sun never sets in Antarctica. So, you know, he's starting to try to organize some of his thoughts. Uh, life cycle of a bird. We have um, a food web. So these are pictures that we pasted and then we work together on um, which animals or which things are at the bottom and which ones are at the top. Uh, they drew a picture of a bird. So my son chose the bee hummingbird and he wrote, uh, he drew a little teeny nest and wrote some facts about the bird. We talked about um, omnivores and carnivores and herbivores. Um, and then we had arranged them in um, some sections that I created first. And then they got to do this, you know, with each other in like a small group setting. Um, we drew a picture of an egg. We, we colored in some different bird eggs and labeled them. We talked about feathers. So sometimes in these unit studies, I often like to um, lay out, I don't know if you can see this, but there's like eight or nine books on the table and I'll just open them all up to the feather pages and just let the kids pick and choose what they want to learn about. And we kind of just go to town and they often learned, leaned into these, you know, pretty detailed discussions for little kids. Um, and then the last thing we did with North America is we talked about, um, we did an experiment on bird beaks. So I gave them various tools like tweezers or spoons and gave them various like types of food like rice and like styrofoam pellets. 
and they had to hypothesize what tools they need to get to what food. Just like birds have different beaks, these kids had to use these different tools to get the food. So that was really um, helped differentiate kind of why birds have different beaks. So that was our science journal. And I'm just gonna flip through the books that we used and which ones we loved the most. So I Can Grow a Flower. Um, we really love these National Geographic kids books. We use them all the time. I have a huge stack of them. Um, it, my son is actually reading these to my daughter. And then um, we have really great discussions afterwards. We really like these. Um, Grow, Flower, Grow. The Hike was a good um, story about um, not just trying to get through the hike as fast as possible just to get to your destination. It's about all the little teeny moments um, as you go. We're doing a lot of hiking right now with COVID, so um, I really like this book. This is probably one of my favorite books. It's called Seeds and Trees. Um, I liked it because it was, it's talking about um, the good things people say that make you feel really good. So the good seeds and the bad seeds or the mean words that people say to you that might hurt your heart or make you feel sad or make you feel bad. It's talking about how to cultivate your garden to make sure that the things that you're planting and the things that you're holding on to are things that make you a better person, make you feel better. Um, and what I also really liked about this book, aside from the message, was that the person having the problem was the man and the person helping um, was the woman. So often you see these prince and princesses books and the damsels in distress. So I like the fact that the girl comes in and she teaches him and she helps him how to tend his garden. So really, really good book. Um, Tree was about the seasons. The Curious Garden was a really cute book about a little boy who changed his city um, from this kind of dark, dull, sad city to this beautiful, vibrant city full of plants and flowers. Um, I love all of these books. Um, there's a bunch in this series. I, I think we have them all now, but A uh, Seed is Sleepy. It, these books are beautiful. They have great messaging, great language, um, really pretty drawings. Um, we used these a lot in just kind of drawing and sketching and painting, and um, they were really beautiful. Um, we Are the Gardeners, about a family who didn't know anything about gardening and then just started gardening and love it. Um, the Big Book of Birds. So these are great. They have a lot of them in the series. We really like these. They work really well for my kids' age. So, um, you know, we're talking about flightless birds, and then they have one, two, three, four pieces of information. It's just enough to be like, okay, let's do one or two pages, and then they can kind of hold on to that information. We could do a project or a discussion and it's just enough information for them. So we, we, I love, I love these books and they really like them too. Um, one of our other favorites was this book, Robins. It's by, um, Eileen Christen, Crystal And, um, it, it was, it's written as a story. There is so many beautiful pictures, so much wonderful information. I am a birder. I know a lot about birds. I learned so much about robins in this book. My kids totally loved it. We read it several times. They pulled it out themselves several times. So that's another one of our favorites. Um, two more books from that series, A Nest is Noisy and An Egg is Quiet. Um, we used one of these, um, A Nest is Noisy, for our, um, they picked, Kids got to pick a bird from this book and draw their nest and label that bird. And then an egg is quiet. We used several times to do a couple different art projects where um, we drew out various eggs. So I, we painted out some eggs. I drew more than my kids did. They picked two or three from this book and I did, I did a lot more. But, um, and then we also did um, the egg drawing inside the egg from our science book, um, I believe it was in here, yeah. So this, um, in an egg and the pieces that we labeled, um, we did that as an art project as well. 
And then the last few books in this series is about owls. So we did Owl Moon. This is about kind of those little moments that you could write about. So there's a little girl going for the first time with her dad to look for an owl and they couldn't really talk during the whole book. So it was a lot of sensory imagery. And then um, uh, we wrote about the first time that we did something in our journals. And then um, Bright Lights and Starry Nights is actually a really cute picture book. So I like this because then my kids get to tell me the story. There's no words, it's just all pictures. Well, there's a couple of words, clickety, shree, scree. Um, but they get to make it up and it's really great for imaginative um, narration and getting them used to talking about their ideas out loud. So I really love that book. Um, and then Owl Babies was just a kind of about these little baby owls and how mommy always comes home. My daughter really liked this book. Um, for some of our extras, we did, um, I bought these Professor Noggin book cards. I really wanted to like them. Um, they do say seven plus and my kids are five and seven and they were just, they were just too much for them. So I'm going to hold on to these for another unit, hopefully in the future. But, um, for right now, these really didn't work for us. Um, we love bird bingo, loved it so much. Um, there are probably 70 birds in the bird bingo. My kids learned so much about birds, how to tell di different birds apart. Um, you know, I would pull out an owl, like a barn owl, and I would say, what kind of bird is this? Oh, it's an owl. I would pull out, um, you know, European robin. Is this a perching bird or a wading bird? So we got so much out of this. I played this game so much. It was fantastic. Um, the puzzle we built twice. Um, and we've, I've only had it for like a couple months and we have a lot of puzzles. So I, I loved this puzzle. It's um, really beautiful, all watercolor feathers. We talked about what birds they were from. The kids wanted to find all of them. Um, we found a lot, but did, we didn't find, some of them are gold. So I have, I'm assuming some of these are made up feathers, but um, really fun doing that. And then um, lastly, I made these, um, Flashcards, so we didn't really use these in the traditional flashcard sense, but like I would lay out these feet. We would take a book and we would kind of talk about storks and herons, and then we would have the kids point to what foot type they think storks and herons have. So we use these more as kind of interactive cards and then kind of fun fact cards. So on the back, I have um, pictures and definitions that we can kind of talk about. Um, so we did feet, we did herbivore, omnivore, carnivore that we um, laid out, and then fish, amphibian, reptile, bird, mammal, insect, and crustacean. So um, those we used a lot kind of in our interactive discussions and talks as kind of a visual aid, um, which worked really well for us. And then, um, while we were doing, um, kind of talking about these things and discussing these things, um, I have, um, I created a game. So here we were discussing our food webs, omnivore, carnivore, herbivore, and then I made this kind of little fun interactive game. It's, um, I made flashcards to go with it. So the cards are just kind of all of the elements that we're using in the game. But the game essentially, um, we have the four habitats, so forest, swamp, um, the North American plains, the, the mangrove um, swamp, and the Mojave Desert. But you kind of get this food chain with the bigger predators at the top and then the um, bottom feeders at the bottom. And then um, we will play the game with these kind of chips. Um, which kind of like you drew a card and you get to pick a blue, a blue character. So you get to pick the blue character from the pile. It was great because then they had to search through all the characters and they had to find the right plant or the right um, carnivore. And um, we had a lot of really great discussions about them. You know, they had to tell me one fact about them as we played. So it kind of looped together the cards, the facts, um, the habitat, why those animals were in that habitat. We played this so many times. The kids really loved it. 
it kind of filled my creative soul because um, you know I'm homeschooling full time now, so I had a lot of fun building it. So, um, so that was our North American unit. I hope you found um, this a little helpful seeing kind of the crafts and projects that we did to kind of tie a lot of all of this together. Thank you.